Hi, I'm Wes from Tennis Warehouse Australia. Today I'm going to compare these seven ball machines. We have the Playmate Volley, the Proton from Hydrogen Sports, the Lobster Elite 3, the Spinfire Pro 2, the DK Sport Pot, the Spin Shot Player, and the Slinger Bag. So the purpose of this video is to help you decide which ball machine might best fit your needs. We have lots of different customers coming to us asking us our opinion on the various ball machines on the market. Um, in this video we're actually including some ball machines we don't actually sell and the reason we're doing that is because we get asked about them as well. So we thought we'd just bring them all into the video and just show the features and we can just have a look at the ball and check comparison of you know, the control panel, how many balls they can fit, how they oscillate, how heavy they are all the things that might be relevant to you in considering each of these ball machines. Spoiler alert, uh, we do have a little bias here at Tennis Warehouse Australia. We sell a lot of this machine here. The Spinfire Pro 2 is our number one selling machine. It seems to suit the needs of almost all of our customers and we get a lot of positive feedback about it. So we tend to sell a lot of this and that may shine through in this video. However, we really want to show the complete range and give you the opportunity to have a look at all of them, see if you agree with us, because this isn't going to meet the needs of absolutely everybody. It just seems to do a really good job for our customers. So we're going to review all of these machines today. However, you may only be interested in two or three of them. So we're going to have timestamps in the description below. So feel free to click ahead to whichever machine it is that you're interested in looking at. So I've mentioned already that the Spinfire Pro 2 is our number one selling machine and I want to take you through some of the features and why we love it so much. Firstly, its top speed is 130 kilometers an hour, which is a really good top speed. It can hold 150 balls, which I feel like that's about the amount of balls. I feel like any ball machine should at least be able to take 150 balls or thereabouts. Um, the reason is it gives you seven and a half minutes of play time if you're operating at an interval of three seconds. So with a ball coming out every three seconds. Um, anything longer than that, I personally, I'm getting too tired. Anything shorter, I'm wishing that you know, I could fill up the balls and quickly get going again. So that to me just feels right, but that's just a personal preference. Um, I also love that this machine has internal oscillation. Okay, that's a really important feature and something to, to really uh, understand when we're comparing these machines. Internal oscillation means that the mechanics in here where the wheels are, are moving left to right, up and down. They're moving around inside the machine. And because this machine is all black in the front and you're down the other end of the court, it's very hard to see which way the wheels are pointing. So you're gonna get a forehand, if you're in a random mode, you might get a forehand, then you might get a backhand, then you might get another backhand, but you're not gonna be able to see where it's going. You won't be able to, t it's not gonna telegraph to you where it's gonna to shoot to. And that's very similar to if you are playing an opponent, you can't really tell if they're going to hit cross court or down the line until they've actually hit the shot. So I feel like that's a really important feature. And when we look at these different machines, you might want to be aware of which ones have internal oscillation versus external oscillation. So I feel like internal oscillation is a really important feature that you want to look for. And I can tell you that the Playmate has internal oscillation, the Spinfire Pro 2 has the internal oscillation, and also the DK Sport Bot has internal oscillation. So that's a plus for those three. It's not a deal breaker, but it's a really good feature. And as I was saying, the movement that happens inside, this particular machine has um, random horizontal, which means you, know, you can get forehands and backhands completely random, but it also has random vertical, which means you're gonna get some deep balls and some short balls. So you can actually turn both of those on at the same time so that you're gonna get random, you know, side to side and short and deep, which is really exactly what you want to be hitting against and practicing when you, when you want to get fit and you just want the ball machine to work you out, then just giving it co to completely random is great, especially for short balls. They're the ones you want to come in on and hit away uh, and be really aggressive on and set up a point for yourself. So I feel like that's, that's a really good feature that this has. Um, the other thing is that it offers a two-line drill. Okay, so that's where it can give you a forehand and a backhand. Forehand, backhand, and it just keeps alternating between a forehand and a backhand. And what you can do is you can set that to a narrow width, so it's fairly easy. You don't have to move far to play your forehand and backhand, or you can set it to medium, it gets a bit harder, or wide, so that you're actually running from side to side on the singles width of the court, uh, and you're going to get tired really quickly with that. 
And same with the horizontal random, you can set that to narrow, medium, or wide. Okay? The other thing that's really great is the amount of spin this machine can hit. The top spin is incredible. Okay? When you set it up to the maximum spin of plus 10, you're going to get balls up around, around your shoulder. And it's a very challenging sort of ball to play. And so I personally, when I play with this machine, I like to set the spin at about plus 3. I find it's much more natural and much more realistic. Like It's, it's similar to what I play against in my competitions. Um, if you play the slice and you have that set to minus 10, which is the maximum, again, it's really extreme slice. Um, so we like to see people, well we recommend people put it at minus 3 which is more natural but it's great to be able to practice at these more extreme spins um, so that if you can handle them and then you come up against you know, your normal opponents who aren't able to hit at that level you're going to find their spin quite easy to deal with compared to what you've been practicing against. Another thing our customers tell us about this machine is how simple it is to use. It's got a fantastic control panel with an LCD display, all the information you need is on there. It's got some simple touch buttons. Another thing it's got is a very nice remote control. It's got a pocket on the back of the machine. You can just pull out the remote control. It's very slim and lightweight. Fantastic. For me on the court, um, I know, you know, with my tennis shorts, I really don't want something heavy in my shorts while I'm playing. And this just fits perfectly and allows me to play and feel like there's nothing really in there. A lot of these machines these days are moving towards um, iPhone apps or Android apps. And that's great. I'm a tech guy as well. I love that stuff. Um, but the idea of having a phone in my pocket while I'm playing tennis, I'm sure you guys know as well, it's not the best experience. Um, so you really need your, you really need an iPhone or, or an app if you're going to be programming in some drills and, and creating you know, customized workouts and things like that. I, I feel like a, an app is great for that. But for, just for generally controlling the machine, um, then a simple lightweight remote control is fantastic. This is great, you, you press the buttons uh, and you get a beep so you know that it's, uh, it's received the signal. You can set balls up to just give you some forehands and then you can change it, move it over the other side, play your backhands. If it's not giving you enough power, you just up it a little bit or if it's coming out too fast, you just back it off. The remote's really, really easy to work with. And on that point, um, this machine doesn't have a, an app on the Android or iPhone. Um, and so that's probably one of the cons of this machine is that um, some people do want that feature. Um, so, you know, if you're somebody who really likes to, to program in drills and, and really get uh, sort of something customised to exactly what you want, then this machine is not, you know, you might want to have a look at one of these other ones. Um, so this one's really just about giving you a great workout, doing a great job being robust and reliable and just hitting some really good solid balls too. And you've also got some battery options with this machine. You can either have the battery inside it, or you can have it as an external battery, which is in a bag and you just carry it away. Um, or you can have an AC machine, so it just runs completely off electricity. But with a typical battery, you're going to get between three to eight hours of playtime, where three hours is what you'll get if you're running it at absolutely the maximum settings, and eight hours is if you're running it on gentle settings. The machine weighs 18 kilos without the battery inside. And so depending on which battery you have, and there's a couple of different options, that the weight of that is on top. And so having an external battery can be really great too. Um, so you basically would just take the battery inside the charging and you can leave your machine in the car or in the shed or wherever you keep it. And it's also very portable. One of the big improvements that was made between the V1 and the V2 version of this machine um, is that it, it increased the size of the wheels and you've got the handle at the front so you can pull it out and carry it and wheel it along. Spinfire is a very well priced machine for all the features that it offers and it comes with a two year warranty. Okay, so the next machine in the lineup that I'd like to talk about is the Lobster Elite 3. They've been making machines for over 50 years and they're made in the USA so they're really high quality, really good build quality. The, the hopper holds 150 balls. Uh, it shoots at 130 kilometers an hour so the specs are very similar here to the Spinfire. Uh, one of the things that it has is external oscillation and I mentioned that earlier that, that was a big plus for the Spinfire and the Playmate and the DK Sport bodies having that internal oscillation. This external oscillation, it does telegraph the delivery a little bit so that you can see exactly where it's going to fire to. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're considering which ball machine to buy. Uh, that being said, the remote control that can come with this one, you can either get a two function remote 
or a 10 function remote. This is the 10 function remote and it's quite small and lightweight. It's exactly what you want from a remote control. It's actually smaller than the Spinfire remote control. Um, so that's excellent. That's, you know, that'll fit in your pocket just nicely without causing you any trouble. It's very portable, has a nice handle at the back. Um, it, it can, uh, it's got nice big transport wheels. You can collapse the hopper like that, and the handle comes down. So that can fit into the car boot or trunk. Um, it, it's, it's a very well designed machine and it's been around a long time. Um, it has horizontal oscillation, it has vertical oscillation. And you can put them both on together, which is what they call triple oscillation. So you're getting short and deep balls at the, at the same time as your left and right balls. Um, the control panel feels a little bit outdated. It's got dials and switches on it. Um, it doesn't have any sort of display. Um, so that, that feels a little bit old, but at the same time, it could be considered a positive in the sense that it's, it's you know, a very simple kind of design. The Lobster is capable of hitting some fantastic topspin and slice. Uh, it's, it's really, you know, heavy topspin, really heavy slice. I've played with this myself, it's really great. Um, the other thing it can do is it can give you some great smashing practice. So it can hit some lobs with some slice on it. So if you've practiced with your opponents and you've, you've warmed up, you know you just play your slice sort of lobs. That's what you want to practice against when you're doing your smashes. I didn't mention it earlier, but the Spinfire can do exactly the same thing. They can both shoot at 60 degree lobs, which is fantastic for smashing practice. One small point with this machine is that when you actually have the horizontal oscillation on, it's moving from side to side, and when you turn it off, you've got to remember to always turn it off when it's exactly in the middle. If you don't do that, you end up turning it off out to the side, and when you return to the court, um, your alignment's out, and you need to spend a bit of time getting it back into order. Um, other machines, like these ones here, they basically recalibrate and bring themselves back to the middle at the end. Um, so that's just a small issue with this machine, but it's not a big deal. And once you get used to it, it's not that big a deal. Another thing about the Lobster is that it's quite an expensive machine, especially when you consider you may have to pay extra for the remote, which a lot of the other machines don't charge anything for the remote, or they include an app. But Lobster do also have a very big range, and if you want, say, an iPhone app, the more expensive models, the Elite 4, the 5, the 5 LE, you can get uh, an iPhone app, or you can go down to the lower models that they have, which go down to very basic models. And they also come with a great three-year warranty. The next machine I want to look at is the DK Sport Bot. This machine can shoot balls at 140 kilometers an hour, so it's faster than these two here. It can also hold 160 balls, whereas these are at 150 balls, the ones I've just compared. Um, so that's going to give you about 8 minutes of heating time, which is great. So this machine's really portable. It's got a handle that's inside the hopper. Uh, it's retractable. You pull it up and you can wheel it on some very nice large wheels. The hopper also comes off, like these ones here, and collapses over the top. As mentioned before, this machine has internal oscillation, which is a really great feature for disguising the delivery, um, so that you can't predict where the balls are going to go. Um, it does have some limitations, this particular machine. It, it sort of can only shoot to three spots on the court, uh, and it can, it can send it to those three spots randomly, um, but it can also bring the depth in as well. Uh, and it also cannot do any lobs. It can, it can shoot the elevation, it can raise the elevation a little bit, but it can't do the smashing practice that you can get from these machines over here. It does have a dedicated remote, which is something that I like. The remote also has the added benefit of having a screen on it so that you can actually tell what the settings are as you're changing them. So as you increase the speed, it's going to tell you what the speed is on here. And that's great because if you like to hit it at you know, 120 kilometers an hour, you can set that there. Um, in terms of size though, that is quite a bulky remote. If we look at it compared to the Spinfire or compared to the Lobster, we can see it's a very big remote. It's starting to get up around kind of an iPhone size. Um, it's, it's not too bad, but yeah, it's definitely on the big side there. This machine does include the two-line drill, and it has an external battery, which is a lithium battery, and it weighs around two kilos. External batteries are really fantastic for just taking inside the charging while you leave your machine in the car or in your, in your 
Garros. The machine itself weighs 22 kilos, so you've got the 22 kilo machine plus the 2 kilo battery. The playtime is around 3 to 4 hours and it has a two year warranty and I would say this is uh, you know, one of the cheaper machines we sell for the features that it does offer. The next machine we're going to have a look at is the Spin Shot Player. This machine can shoot balls at 110 kilometers an hour and has 120 ball capacity. Remember, these can shoot at 130 kilometers an hour, 140 kilometers an hour, and we've got 150 ball, 150 ball, 160 ball capacity. So it's a little bit lower on those specs. It also has a fairly small battery with a two hour minimum of play time. It's quite a portable machine. It's got uh, plastic, flaps at, plastic flaps at the top uh, for the hopper, and you've got a retractable handle here, and some transport wheels at the bottom. I will say that the transport wheels are quite small by comparison to every other machine in the lineup today. So if you've got some rugged terrain to get over, some grass, things like that, this might not be the best choice. Another thing about this machine is that it has external oscillation. And we've talked about how important that is. So this machine, the whole machine moves from side to side. So it does actually telegraph the delivery and you might be able to predict where the balls are gonna go. The control panel itself is quite difficult to work with. It's really designed, this machine's all about drills. It's got 12 pre-programmed drills built into it and it's got, a, it's got an app called the Drill Maker app. So it's really wanting you to work closely with the app. You get into the app, you can actually modify any of those 12 drills and save over the top of them and save your own settings and save those as your preferred drills. Um, the problem is if you want to do some simple things just like hitting some forehands or backhands or turning on horizontal oscillation or the two line drill, which it does have, but you basically have to program them in as one of the drills and then save it. So it's a lot of, a lot of work through the app and some people will really love that because they like working with apps and other people will probably prefer a machine that can just kind of really just get going. Um, that being said, that's the player model. Spinshot does have a couple of Quite a few models and I believe there's a, a higher model than this that does have the ability to do some things from the control panel but this particular player model that we have here seems quite difficult. Um, this machine is priced pretty well and it comes with a two-year warranty. So the next machine I'd like to talk about is the Slinger Bag. Now the Slinger Bag is quite a new machine on the market and you can see in this comparison that it's the biggest and that's the bulkiest of the bunch. Uh, and that's because they've tried to do something quite interesting here where they've created a bag with a ball machine inside it. So the idea of this is that you can stick your tennis rackets in this back compartment here and you open the front and your balls go in there. So it's a ball and a bag all in one. And they've got some pretty cool things in here You've got the ability to charge your mobile phone and they've got a camera holder. Um, so they've got some yeah, pretty, pretty great design. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, and one thing that this brand does really well is their marketing. They've just got some amazing players, former players and current players who are endorsing this product. Um, and so it's, the, the marketing is really top notch for this. Now, the other thing about this is it's quite a strange product for us to be including in this comparison because it's not really designed to compete with any of these machines. These machines are all at a much higher level than this one here. Um, this is really designed as a cheap price point. It's really to, to make it affordable and allow people to get out on the court and hit some balls, which is a great thing. Um, Unfortunately, to get a machine to be quite cheap, there's quite a lot of things that have to be kind of cut out of it. And one of the things, one of the big things really is that it can only do top spin due to its single throwing wheel design. And so that means that as you increase the speed, you are actually increasing the top spin. And you will see a lot of comments on forums about this sort of problem. But basically the arc of the ball, it's a very heavy top spin shot and it's really quite unrealistic. So a lot of people have found out a way around that is to simply bring the machine closer to the net or even bring it onto the same side of the net as the player and just, just get some sort of soft toss balls coming out a little bit slower, a little bit easier to play with. Um, another thing that is interesting about this machine is that the, 
the ability to oscillate, which we talk about internal versus external oscillation. This one has external oscillation. The whole machine moves from side to side, it telegraphs the delivery, and this one is really slow, really quite slow in the way that it oscillates, and it's actually got a separate oscillator which um, comes with the machine, uh, or, or you have to pay a little bit extra to get the oscillator, and you put it on the ground, and then you sit this on top of it, and that's what allows it to oscillate from side to side. I do like this ball machine, it has a really nice large ball capacity at 144 balls. Uh, the top speed though is only 73 kilometers an hour, and that's really again due to the, the machine only really being able to hit top spin balls, it can't hit the flat balls. So at the very heavy top spin balls, you'll get just over 70 kilometers an hour. Um, another thing that's interesting about this is most machines have the control panel at the back or the side of the machine, well out of the way of the throwing wheels themselves. This one has the control panel right at the front, right next to where the balls are ejecting. And so to, to, that's an obviously quite a big safety risk, but um, what they've done to fix that is that they've included the remote control, which is quite a nice remote control. Um, it's quite small, again, if we compare it to other remotes like the Spinfire, it's a nice small one, so it's not gonna be a problem playing with that in your pocket. But basically, this remote only has two functions. It can turn the machine on and off, and it can also turn that oscillation on and off for um, moving side to side. And so when you make your adjustments with the control panel, you can't actually press play, otherwise you might you know, end up shooting the ball into yourself. So you have to walk away from the machine and use the remote to press play. The control panel itself is very basic. I think you know, there's only a few knobs there um, and sort of very analog kind of control panel. The elevation also is manual. You just have a knob to turn it up and it can't do any sort of real knobs. It can just raise the elevation a little bit. If you wanted to do some smashing practice, it wouldn't be possible as we know. Smashing practice, you want to do some slice type knobs for um, smashing with and this can only hit the top spin and it just can't raise to that level. So um, it also comes with a one year warranty. Uh, which is a little bit light compared to most of these, which are two or three, depending on which model it is. Um, but, you know, as I said again, this is uh, a weird one for us to even compare in this comparison because it's not trying to compete with these. It is a cheaper price point machine and um, it's getting people out on the court and hitting balls, which is a great thing. So this machine is the Proton from Hydrogen Sports and this is one of the newest machines on the market and it's quite an exciting machine. The designer has really gone back to the beginning and started again and redesigned how a ball machine works. And what they've done, which is really different to all the other machines, is they've come up with something that can be carried to and from the court. It's got a strap which goes on, and that can either be a carry handle or something that goes over your shoulder. And because of the way it's been built with a lithium battery and some um, lightweight components, it's, it's not too heavy. So really, this is all about carrying your machine to and from the court. And in some circumstances, that might be what you want to do. And in others, you might like the idea of just wheeling it out there because um, you're already going to be carrying a tennis bag and some balls. And so to be carrying too many things can be a challenge. So wheeling some things, you know, is great. It's a little bit like if you go and play a game of golf, do you want to carry your golf clubs or do you just want to wheel them on a buggy? So. <clears throat> it's a really good idea. Um, the, the other thing that's interesting about it is the, the way that it oscillates. So it does have external oscillation. Remember, we're a big fan of the internal oscillation, which this machine, this machine, and this machine have. Um, and because pretty much all small machines have to have external oscillation, this one has a pin which kind of comes out at the front of the machine and lifts it up off the ground. And then it's got some wheels at the back. I, I think. We have a look, there's two wheels there that the machine rolls from side to side on, and this comes out at the front. So it's a very, very interesting design, and what we found in our testing, unfortunately, when we took this out onto the court, we were playing on a synthetic grass surface, and those wheels at the back just could not oscillate from side to side. Um, and we know that this machine is really, it's only sold in the USA at the time that we're making this video, and um, 
and they really just predominantly use hard court. So I think this machine would be able to oscillate perfectly on hard court, but it does seem to have some limitations on other surfaces. It may be that there are some simple workarounds for that, like maybe you could put down a little hard mat or something um, to get by on that one. The ball capacity is 100, as I've said, that's um, pretty small. Um, you know, I like something up around 150 balls to get the seven and a half minutes of play time. It, it shoots a nice ball. It does have an iPhone app. Um, the app is really well designed. It's very easy to customize drills and build your own drills. Um, one thing that I don't like is that it doesn't actually have a dedicated remote control. So it's a bit like if you have a TV at home that's all uh, you know the latest and greatest, you might have an app that can control it, but you've also got the dedicated remote for it. Me personally, I know I can control it from the iPhone app, but I'm reaching for that normal remote pretty much every time. I like apps for building programs and saving them, um, but just for the day-to-day -day normal use that you want out of a ball machine, a dedicated remote I think would be a nice feature, and maybe that'll be added into this later. Being a, being a brand new machine on the market, um, there, there's been a few glitches. We've seen some design flaws, which they've already rectified. I think the designer is a very smart guy. He's done a good job. One of the things that they've had trouble with is that um, the carousel, which stirs the balls, um, wasn't doing a good enough job. And what you get is this thing, which I call, I just describe it as an igloo, where the balls kind of build over the top and it can spin and it's not actually able to knock any balls in. So somebody has to come along and just stir them a little bit to keep it going. So they introduced this little peg um, that you have to put in and I believe this has been improved further and been made even bigger and it's now spring loaded. And so you've got to put that on each time you use the machine just to get it to stir, to stir properly. Um, one thing I love about this machine is the battery. It's a click in, click out sort of battery just like that. Um, so it's an, it's an external battery. You can, you can just um, buy a few of them so that you could have a few of them there ready with you to keep playing. Because one of the things about this machine, light, small, this is only a small battery. Um, the website says you get a thousand shots on one battery. So depending on what your interval is between the shots, you're probably gonna get somewhere around an hour of play time. And for many people, that might be enough. Um, Probably I'd recommend that you know maybe buying a second battery and having that charged up and ready to go would be great But it's so easy just to swap that in and out. So that's That's just something to keep in mind as I mentioned before there are some design issues with this machine that they're working through I think they're doing a good job of improving them um, But at the time of recording this video, there's a lot of discussion about the the drift that happens with this machine um, So basically as a ball fires, there's a bit of recoil and the machine will start, you know, in the right, it'll be aiming down the center of the court, but by the time you've shot your 100 balls, it's now lost its position and it's, and it's aiming off to the side. Um, there's some interesting videos where they kind of draw a chalk line around the machine and, and watch it move. Um, but I believe there are probably going to be some fairly easy ways to rectify that. Um, but at, the, at this stage, it's just something to just keep in mind. Uh, and that's really a, f a problem that's been caused by creating such a lightweight machine. Again, the aim of this machine is to create something you can carry to the court. And they've done a, an incredible job of making this so light. But then if you have a heavy machine like some of these other ones, well, they're not heavy, but they're heavier, um, they are more stable. They're just going to sit there rock solid, fireballs and not move around. When you make it really light, that's just one of the unintended consequences and um, hopefully that can be ironed out soon. Okay, so talked about some of the things we like. Um, we love that it's small, we love that it's portable. If you've got a very small car, this might be a good choice for you because you'll be able to get it into the boot or the trunk of your car. Um, one thing I don't like that much uh, is that every time you take the machine to the court, you've got to take off the handle and then put it back on when you're leaving. Um, that can just be a little bit of extra time, but I guess it's just something you get used to. I find the control panel itself quite easy to work with. It has fairly limited functionality when you consider that this machine has an app, and so it's got some extra features you can do in the app. You can't do so much of that from the control panel. And 
I think even from the control panel, if you want to shoot some forehands or backhands, really what you have to do is pick up the machine and move it. Um, the only way to get it to move to the left or, or the right uh, is to use the app. So again, you might have to have the phone on you while you're playing. I personally don't like having the phone in my pocket. I'd rather a dedicated remote. Um, so that's a bit of an issue is, is just always having to have that on you to use the full functionality of this machine. Another thing this machine is missing is the ability to do lobs. Uh, the old overhead practicing those smashes is a really important part of the game and something that we don't get enough time doing. So having a ball machine to do that is great. This machine can only raise the elevation to 27 degrees. It's got that rod that comes out at the front, which is a completely different design to how the other machines work. And so some of these other machines can go right up to 60 degrees and give you a proper smash. So that's something that this machine is lacking. Um, it does only come with a one year warranty. Again, most of the machines come with a two, even a three year warranty. So that, um, that you know, I believe you can pay extra to get the extra warranty on that. The last ball machine we're going to talk about today is the Playmate Volley. This ball machine holds 200 balls. It shoots at 113 kilometers an hour and it weighs 21 kilos. This machine is extremely well made out of aircraft aluminium. It's made in the USA. It's sold very much, it's predominantly sold to tennis clubs where you've got users who don't really treat machines the best and you just want a really reliable ball machine in that situation. The control panel is very simple to use, it's just got some dials that anybody can understand. Um, battery indicator is just a flashing light, it's just it's very simple. And as we've talked about, again, with all these machines, this one has internal oscillation, which is really great. You can't actually predict where the balls are going to go down the other end of the court. Um, it's very simple to operate and it has fairly limited functionality in the sense that Instead of being able to just do completely random across the court, it can actually just do a two-line oscillator where it's going to shoot one forehand, one backhand. Uh, but the beauty of that is you can set the width of that two-line to be quite narrow or medium or wide, but you can basically set it any width you like uh, within the singles lines. It's got a very easy to detach battery. So it, it attaches onto the side of the machine, which is a great design but you can just unclip it, take it inside the charging and then bring it back and put it onto the machine. The hopper just simply collapses down like that. So if you are going to take it to and from a club in the back of your car, that's about as small as it's going to get. It's got this nice four wheel design, so it can just move around pretty easily. One of the things that I really like about this machine is how fast the intervals are. You can get balls to come out one every second which is just really quick and sometimes you might want to do some volley practice where you're really practicing some fast volley so that's a really good feature. Um, the elevation is only manual so you've got to turn a dial. Again that's probably built with just reliability in mind using it in clubs where users are just uh, you know not treating it the best. This machine does come with a remote control. The remote control is a very basic remote control. If we compare it to say the Spinfire remote, you can see it's quite small, um, but it's very basic. All it can do is turn the feed on and off, so start the balls firing, um, but you can also hold the feed down to stop the oscillator. Um, I will say that this machine is probably one of the more expensive machines we sell. It does come from America, it's made in America, you can kind of expect that. Um, and it does come with a two year warranty. So if you're looking for a really robust, reliable machine, this is definitely one we would recommend. So that wraps up our review of the seven ball machines we have here today. I hope it's been helpful for you. I hope it helps you pick a ball machine that might be right for your needs. Of course, if you've got more questions, feel free to give us a call at Tennis Warehouse Australia and we'd be happy to help.